Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Akina, your host and president of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. Honolulu recently enacted Bill 41, which lengthened short-term vacation rental stays to over three months, and uh, this basically banned short-term rentals across most of Oahu. Now, this has become a very sensitive issue with passionate and well-meaning advocates on both sides. Uh, there are many people who believe that Bill 41 is good for Hawaii, uh, that it will protect our neighborhoods and increase our housing for locals. Yet there are others who have grave concerns about Bill 41, and we're going to look at the views of one community organization today. Our guest is Don Borgeson. She's chair of the Friends of Kui Lima, which is a community group on the North Shore, bringing voice to those affected by this issue. Don, thank you so much for joining us today. Aloha to you. Aloha to you too. Thank you for inviting me. You know, before we get started, very quickly, could you give our viewers a little bit about your own personal background and, and what you do? Uh, well, what I do is uh, right now, I'm obviously the chair of the uh, Friends of Kui Lima. Um, I'm a quasi retired. Uh, my family has owned property on the island since the 60s. Um, we're working on right now relocating over there probably permanently, uh, but in the meantime, we've been um, very strong advocates of the North Shore. Our family has been, um, and we've had property there around the Turtle Bay area uh, since the early 80s. So this is a near and dear subject to us. We love the North Shore. I can understand. Don, how did you get involved in the Bill 41 issue? And uh, tell us a, a little bit about Friends of Kui Lima. So Friends of Kui Lima actually started with Bill 89, which was in uh, 2019. Uh, there were several parts of that bill that affected uh, the North Shore community, especially, but also around the resort area. Um, and at the last minute, uh, the resort area was actually left out of the bill. So we were, we immediately became illegal short-term renters, period. Um, and I uh, connected with several other people, uh, you know, that lived there um, as well as on property. And we kind of formed up this group because we had to go to uh, an attorney to be able to get a declaratory ruling that we were actually resort property. We met all the requirements. Um, and as a result of that, we kind of learned the hard way what worked and what didn't just in um, uh, educating folks. So when this uh, Bill 41 came around, um, we kind of fired up the band again and um, this time decided we'd go ahead and do it uh, in a much more uh, partnership manner and developed our website and our communications. And we've been partnering with a lot of different groups around the island. I see. Now, Don, uh, give us the nuts and bolts. Um, uh, hold off. We'll have a lot of time to hear your critique of Bill 41 later on. But but just right now, the, the, the basic facts. What, what is Bill 41? What, what does it do? Uh, what uh, Bill 41 does is it, it basically kind of eliminates short-term rental, rentals. Um, folks that had uh, non-conforming use certificates previously can continue on renting, but they have to register. And then they designated specific areas in resort property areas as being uh, permitted to be able to do short-term rentals. Anybody apart from that, um, if you didn't have a nuke, that's what those are called, the certificates, um, you're, you're Technically, you're not eligible to apply for or to be a short-term renter uh, for your properties. Um, so that affects a lot of people across the island. Um, on, on the North Shore, there's not only individual homeowners, but then there's you know folks that have condo units and that type of thing. And, now, mm -hmm. Bill 41 exempts the resort districts, however. So does that mean that people in re resort districts on the North Shore can still do short-term rentals? Yes, it does. We're exempted uh, by the tax maps that were included in Bill 41. Also too, in Waikiki, there's a couple what they call condo tells that were exempted and considered resort property as well as Ko'olina. Um, unfortunately in Ko'olina, they cut it kind of in half 
Um, so a portion of that has continued to be uh, resort property. And then another portion of it, they kind of dropped off, similar to what happened to us a few years ago with Bill 89. Now, your concern is for those who are not living in resort districts and and the impact this has on their ability to conduct short-term vacation rental businesses. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that impact. What kind of impact will that be uh, upon, let, let's say, the, the, the average individual who's just renting out a unit, um, and what kind of impact will it be on businesses? Uh, well, I can certainly say for the sh for the uh, small business owners, folks that do cleaning, property management that aren't part of a larger group, um, this is really going to have a detrimental effect on them because, of course, they're going to lose uh, some of that income, if not all of it, in some cases. It also means that small businesses like uh, plumbers, mechanics, those types of folks that go in and regularly take care of properties uh, those properties are no longer going to be rented, so it's kind of a question on on how that's going to impact them. One thing I will say is is throughout this entire process with Bill Forty One, is we've we've continually asked for data that supported the policy decisions that were made in order to say this is a good thing or a bad thing, and that this is actually going to lead to affordable housing because we're very much for affordable housing across the island, but taking a sledgehammer to the approach doesn't seem to be the right thing to do. So obviously, Don, you're referring to the claim that Bill 41 will actually make more housing available that local people can afford. You're saying, if I hear you correctly, you've asked for the data behind that, but, but you've not seen that. No, no, there's no data. In fact, we've done a lot of reaching out. Uh, we reached out to University of Hawaii. Um, they should have a report hopefully coming out sometime this summer about housing on the island. Um, I don't know if it'll be just limited to Oahu, but also the other islands as well. Uh, but there's no appreciable, uh, you know, objective data that we can locate. A lot of people refer to the uh, tourism authorities office is having data, but uh, some people probably don't know that's self-reported data. And a lot of it comes from the hotels because that's kind of their anchor on where they're getting information. And so, uh, you know, even at Turtle Bay, we would have heard about, uh, you know, if somebody wanted to know how many people were staying, you know, what were the types of folks that were staying? Because it's not just vacationers that are using these short-term rentals. And that's a big uh, mis misnomer of what short-term rentals do. It's not just vacations. So if it's not data and research that is driving the decision that it was made by the Honolulu County Council, what what is driving that decision? Um, uh, I think... I'm putting would, you on the spot here, I suppose. Yeah, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> uh, I, I, would, I would say the hotel industry. Um, they have been trying for a long time to eliminate competition. And as we know, with any type of industry, especially when it comes to travel, there's always going to be a change in the industry. And it has moved more towards people wanting to be able to stay in homes versus staying in a hotel for a very expensive nightly rate. And the hotels are nice, um, but you don't have the benefits of a kitchen, uh, an area to lounge in necessarily, unless you really can afford it. And um, most families can't, you know, we on the North Shore, we've got BYU right there. Plus we have um, the surfing competitions that happen where folks need a place to kind of unwind and uh, join family and friends and stuff. And, and uh, the, the hotel experience is so costly, it's cost prohibitive. Now, you're talking about uh, surfing competitions on the North Shore. That, that has been, or at least it was prior to the pandemic, a huge thing for Hawaii, uh, especially for the North Shore economy and for people who come from across the world to congregate and to experience something unique. What is what does this community of people who come together for the surfing have to say about Bill Forty One? How uh, will this impact them? I uh, we've talked to uh, Robin Herb, who is um, the 
the regional director for North America and Hawaii. And um, she, you know, their big concern is, is they need to have a location for the entourage and that it, 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 there, there is an entourage that comes with these athletes. And let's face it, they're athletes, they're world-class athletes. The, the ones that are the very top tier that have a lot of supporters, you know, can afford probably more expensive lodgings and uh, some of the sponsors do, uh, you know, own property for the surfers, but for the, you know, regular ones that are just trying to work their way through the competitions, um, it's, it's very, very expensive for them. And um, they do need a place to be able to unwind. And, and by entourage, I mean, um, it's not just uh, you know, your support group, some of them travel with, um, you know, their athletic trainers, as well as in some cases, you know, medical personnel, um, if they're having issues. So it, it, that's, it's a lot for these folks. And to not have the ability to now to be able to rent a property, um, you know, that's closer to the shore, because they have training, they have to get ready for the competition. That's a big concern. And Don, I would imagine that in addition to the athletes and their what you call entourage, there are also the spectators, uh, people from across our islands, locals, as well as people who come from across the world, uh, who bring in uh, dollars to the North Shore and to the Oahu economy uh, whenever they travel to the, these these surfing events. Right, right, that's correct. And, um, you know, with any large group of folks, you're going to have some of those that probably, you know, <laughs> you wouldn't want to rent out a place to, but that's what the enforcement pieces are that were part of Bill 89. And yet uh, the Department of um, Planning and Permitting um, really never did any kind of an enforcement. So some of these neighborhoods that were impacted and not just on the North Shore, but but speaking on behalf of the North Shore, uh, yeah, there's you know, party houses, they should have been reported, folks should have been there, there should have been something taken care of. I think in some cases, probably there were, but, uh, you know, that's a, that's a really big concern for the folks that, you know, that are there, that's their home, is you don't want a par party house, you know, to pop up because of some, you know, competition or something that's going on. Don, I, I hear that you're acknowledging one of the concerns that some of the advocates of Bill 41 had. Uh, many of them said that uh, short-term vacationers change the nature of the neighborhood, that they bring in noise, debris, they violate the, the basic rules of, uh, and laws uh, that are in place in a neighborhood. Uh, but, but I also hear you talking about a failure of enforcement. Uh, what's your overall assessment of some of the concerns of people over short-term vacationers? I think um, parking has been a big issue in some of the residential areas with Bill 41. Um, they did address that with the with the homes that are, you know, going to be able to continue to rent that parking has to be corralled and, and respect the neighborhood, respect the neighbors, keeping um, vehicles, you know, off street parking. Um, some of the other concerns uh, you know, that that weren't addressed that should have been uh, noise. Um, and, you know, just the constant coming and going of vehicles, that type of thing. Um, so I, I, I think had Bill 89 been fully implemented and enforcement actions taken, we might have been in a different place when they were proposing Bill 41. Now, your group, uh, Friends of Kui Lima, has also talked about other proposals, as you mentioned, uh, and there's also Bill Number Four, which you've addressed at the Honolulu County Council. That one, I understand, would increase property taxes of short-term rentals. Could you explain Bill Four and tell us what your concerns are about it? Sure. Uh, right now, Bill Four has uh, it's added a new tax classification for TVUs, which is the transient vacation unit. Um, uh, bed and breakfasts right now already have their own classification. Um, and for some folks that might have been following this, there were about 800 or so people that they were saying were registered or had certificates. Of those 800 units or properties, there's only 34 that are actually bed and breakfast, which means there's a whole tax classification right now for 34 properties. 
Meanwhile, uh, this new classification will affect pretty much everybody else. Um, there isn't anything, there has been um, some thought that there might be a two tier uh, addition to this bill before it passes so that it would be based on property values would be how properties would be assessed. Uh, but the, the bill for right now is the structure of the taxing mechanism. It's not the actual tax rate. The tax rate will happen next spring uh, as it goes through its normal process for the following property tax year. Don, you and your group are also concerned about Bill 9, which would tax empty homes. Tell us a little about that. Yes. So this would be a home that would be uh, for folks, uh, if you lived in your property and you were out away from it for 180 days or more, you would be subjected to the in, an increase of a 3% uh, mill rate um, for being away from home. Now, they do have a medical exemption uh, and they do have a military exemption in that, but the problem is, is it doesn't stipulate whether or not it's a contiguous 180 days or if it is throughout the year. For medical, for some folks, as, they might, as you might know, uh, sometimes ongoing medical problems are, are, gonna be, are gonna be ongoing. And right now, the way it reads is it's a one-time exemption that you get, which would not be a good thing for folks that live there. For a second home, um, pretty much it pushes you into that situation where you need to rate your property. And the idea behind it was is they don't want vacant homes. That's why it's called the empty home tax. They want those properties available for people for affordable housing. But um, it, Again, this is a sledgehammer approach to something. When you're talking about a property that's affordable, if the if the you know median value of a property is over a million dollars, I don't know somebody that's just working one or two regular jobs could even afford to live in that property. So it doesn't it it's it's suggesting that it's going to address a problem, but really the problem itself isn't being addressed as far as how do you get affordable housing available for folks that are making, you know, the regular wages, not, not somebody that can, you know, that has a, a much higher value property? Well, Don, I appreciate the critique you've given of Bill 41 and other bills as well before the Honolulu County Council. But uh, what do we do? Uh, is, is there a, a better way to regulate short-term vacation rentals? What are your uh, thoughts yeah. as we close? My, my thoughts are, again, I'll go back to the data. We don't know really how many folks are, are renting out um, a room in their house as a bed and breakfast in order to make their mortgage. Um, there's single moms out there with kids that need that extra income to be able to get by. Uh, we've got, um, you know, uh, seniors, elders that are doing kind of the same thing, that they're renting out parts of their home in order to be able to keep their home. The data would provide us with some demographics about who actually is doing rentals, short-term rentals, uh, longer-term rentals, and know where those properties are and figure out how can we better help the council formulate policy to be able to address the housing shortage, but without this kind of low hanging fruit, which is kind of demonizing folks that rent out properties that are perceived as just vacation. But in fact, we've got medical folks that come over. We've got first responders that come over and they need to stay someplace for 60 days um, or, or for the military transitioning in, in and out. Um, so I, I think getting involved, being educated, we have on our website, we try and keep up on the bills that affect um, the short-term housing, short-term rentals, um, and um, just trying to get out there and let people know when bills are coming up. It's, it's really about folks getting involved and, and really getting educated. Don't just listen to what's on the news. Don't just listen to one council member saying something, but really get educated about what the contents of a bill are. That's probably the single biggest thing going forward. And we're hoping to maybe um, help clean up some of the language that was in that bill at some point 
um, working with the with the council, um, you know, to to address some of those issues. But and until we've got some data, it's really difficult to kind of forecast and say this is going to work. There's no one one thing right now I think that's going to work. Don, I want to thank you. Your information has been very helpful, and I think many people will benefit from it. I thank you again for being with us sure. and for all your work with Friends of Kuilima. My guest today has been Don Borgeson. Uh, she, as mentioned before, is chair of Friends of Kuilima. And I'm Kaylee Akina with the Grassroot Institute on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. We'll be back with you next time. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.